If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who have seen, heard, or encountered a cryptid, Bigfoot, Skinwalker, Dog Man, Wendigo, or some unknown or unexplainable thing or creature, what's your story? So I was 10 years old when this happened, and it was late at night. I saw a large bipedal creature go sprinting into a cornfield next to a dairy barn in upstate New York. All of a sudden, every animal in the barn started to lose it. And you can hear them, it's the loudest I've ever heard these cows moo, like they were scared to death. My mother called the farmer who owned the farm, and he went down to check it out. The next day, he found a wild turkey corpse with its neck snapped and half eaten in the middle of the field. The creepiest part? He said he knew exactly what I was talking about and was installing motion sensor lights to deter whatever it was. I never saw it again, but the farmer, who's lived there for 30 plus years, said he's seen or heard them at least once a year. He refuses to tell anybody because he doesn't want to be labeled as a kook. I live insanely close to a section of the Appalachian Trail in my backyard. I grew up in the area and in the woods around here. There were only two things that ever made me nervous being in there alone, Lyme disease and other humans. That was until I moved here. The first incident took place during the summer a couple years ago. My children were playing in the backyard on their trampoline and had mentioned seeing a dog, but considering my neighbors all have dogs, I didn't give it too much thought and gave them a safety talk about not approaching strange animals and to come get me if they see anything else. When I went out back to check on them, they were fine, but across the field, right at the tree line, some movement caught my attention. It was a shaggy black dog, a wolf. It was really big, as there is a fallen tree in that spot, and it gave me a fairly good reference for size. It turned and silently hopped over the tree and into the woods. It scared me, and my kids spent the rest of the day never leaving my eyesight. It was surreal. I've never seen anything like it. The second incident happened this morning when I let my labs out to do their thing. I was standing, waiting for them to finish up, when I saw something move out of the corner of my eye again on the tree line. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me because, when I turned to look, they were gone. I looked to see if there was anything that could cause my brain to create a pattern, but there was nothing. What I saw reminded me of the Fresno Nightcrawler, but it had arms and a head. It was tall and thin, with thick, long white hair or fur. I feel crazy just typing this out, but I know I saw something that I really can't explain. I live in rural eastern Kentucky, and at the time of seeing this creature, the woods were just outside my backyard. So, about a year ago, I moved houses. I kept seeing a creature in the woods at night. This creature, from what I could see from the window on my door, was tall, about half the size of a tree, gray with long stick-like arms with longer fingers, and dark circles where the eyes should be. But since I was normally alone, I ignored it and brushed it off as my imagination. But I had some friends over for Halloween. One of my friends walked into the kitchen to make tea. She came running back into the room, saying she wasn't going back out there because she saw a slender man I asked her to describe it, and she gave almost the exact same description I stated above, mind you, I never told anyone about this creature, thinking it was my imagination. I went into the kitchen with her and looked out. By that point, it was gone, which was normal, it always disappeared after it was seen. But later that night, it was back, staring at the door. And this time I was the friend that saw it first, and now another friend saw it there. After more observing, we came to this description. A tall, thin, humanoid creature. It is half as tall as a large oak tree. Gray skinned with long arms and hands that are tipped in long claws. So when I was in my early teens, around 14 or 15, me and my buddy used to play in the woods behind what used to be my great-grandmother's old house. The woods had a little gully slash gulch that we used to jump using our bikes and a few kudzu vines that grew thick enough to swing on. Well, on one June afternoon, around 1.45, we were back there playing when we heard something running toward us. It was too slow to be an animal, or at least one in the area where we lived in North Carolina, but way too fast to be a human. We bolted out of the woods as fast as we could. The weird part is that nothing chased us farther than the edge of my old great-grandma's driveway. Being the stupid kids we were, we kept going back to see if we could catch whatever it was and see what it was. One night we decided to go around midnight to see if the reason we weren't catching this thing was because it was daytime, despite our terrifying encounter during the day. We gave each other a 20-minute leeway in case the other wasn't in the agreed-upon spot at midnight. Sure enough, my buddy. We'll call him Q for anonymity's sake. I was late, so I did what we agreed, which, looking back now, was an idiotic idea. I yelled out his name a few times. Well, shortly after the fifth tome of calling out Q's name, 
I heard what sounded like his voice but not quite him. Yell out for help. When I looked where the sound sounded like it was coming from, I saw something that was about 5 feet tall while on all fours standing at the end of the street, staring straight at me. I took off running and hid under a moving truck for what felt like forever. The last I saw of the creature, it ran off into the woods by my great grandma's old house. The only reason I ever imagined it was after I bolted into my house. Evidently, after that, my buddy came out and had the exact same thing happen to him. He told me the exact same description of the thing before I could even mention it to him the next day. To this day, we are in our mid-twenties now, we have never entered those woods again and have vowed to never set foot in them again until we know what it is and if we can kill it. I was driving to work, maybe a mile down the road from my house at this point, when something kind of loped into the middle of the road. It was just far enough away that I couldn't get a clear look, but what I saw moved like a dog and had the thin, spindly legs of a deer. Its mouth was set in this kind of grimace of pain. It looked like its skin was falling off. But most importantly, it had these enormous eyes the size of dinner plates that glowed back at me in the dark in the most hauntingly bright yellow. It paused for the briefest moment before continuing into the bushes and underbrush on the other side of the road. I asked some people on the internet to pitch their theories to me about what they might have been. There were lots of good, very normal suggestions that didn't fit, from bison to bear with mango to beefalo. The theory that made the most sense to me was something called a dog man. The theory came with a warning, don't go in those woods at night. I don't know how to explain this bit. Here we go. To begin with, for context, I am with two buddies, males, and we were at their house, so we went into the woods because we thought it would be fun, we also live near Zinsville in Dresden, Ohio, and the weird stuff happened. We start walking and everything is fine, then we feel like we are watched, me first, then another, then the last friend, and that's the first thing. Next, twigs start snapping towards his neighbor's house, but we see nothing that snapped them. Lastly, as we are moving across this, maybe a max one inch deep water creek, we hear it. The bellowing if it can be described as it. It was a mixture between a deer buck and the deepness and guttural sound of a bear. We dot booked. IT. As we are running out, we keep hearing it, but it is not getting louder. We make it out that we never saw it, and we don't think it saw us. I'm skating three hours after it happened. I'm scared and don't know what it is slash was dot please help me identify this thing. I'm scared. We are in a house right now, but we don't know what will happen. I am from Delaware, and I experienced the same thing when I was 15. Me and my friend were walking through the woods, and I noticed something moving ahead. I told my friend to stop and look with me at what it was. It was an all-white humanoid creature moving in a weird way by trees, and it noticed us before we did it. It was when it looked at us that scared us off running. It was all white, with no facial features, no eyes, no mouth, nothing, just an all white blank face and a taller body with weird arms. We both took off running. I want to know what this was. There's one Tennessee cryptid that doesn't get nearly as much attention as I think it should, and it's hard to find reliable information about it, especially since it appears to be confined to a specific county. But it's one of the creepiest things I've ever heard of, and, like Mothman or the Jersey Devil, it has an intriguing backstory that goes way back in time. White Bluff Screamer Some speculate that the White Screamer is an exotic animal that escaped when a traveling circus was passing through town. Scared of the repercussions, when they could not quickly restrain the beast, they opted to leave it and hurried to the next town. Others say there is no early creature that could cause the damage to the White Screamer and instead suggest that it is an unearthly apparition that wanders aimlessly. Others say it is a banshee that emits the horrible cries. The white screamer haunts the White Bluff area, often terrifying hikers and hunters who stumble upon it. Even drivers and walkers have had experiences with the strange creature. They all describe the same type of beast. It is usually hunched over, but it can stand completely erect. Often, it is found hunting or discovered after the deaths of dogs or calves. Despite the origin, a misty form seems to appear and scream like a woman in great distress. Those unlucky enough to hear it can only listen for a matter of seconds before they are driven completely insane. Those lucky enough to escape have returned with non-believers, only to find a spot of charred grass where the figure once appeared. Many were not lucky and suffered greatly at the hands of the horrible beast. In the early 1920s, a young man established a small home and farm with his wife and seven children. On occasion, they would wake up to the sound of blood curdling and screaming. The children would be inconsolable. When the man could no longer handle the nightly calls, he headed out one evening, carrying his rifle. He climbed the nearby hills, where he had heard the sounds, but found nothing. When he decided to give up and turn back, he did finally hear screams. Unfortunately, 
These were not the screams that had led the man on his search. He ran as fast as he could back to the house, but it was too late. The screams he heard were those of his family, and now their bodies lay strewn all over the cabin, pieces scattered everywhere. Their house and graves can still be found in the hollow of White Bluff. In 1999 or so, I lived in Farmer, Tennessee, on the border with North Carolina. My children and I had been spotlighting on the back roads, which were near our house. It was about 1130 p.m. There were fields right beside the house. We were coming back in after a couple hours of spotlighting. In the field right beside my house, I spotted a brown back of something on two legs running fast toward a herd of cowering deer. And joining him were about six or seven more of these creatures running on their hind legs. I was tripping out. I was whispering loudly for the children to wake up to see this. They roamed around too late. By then, I was in front of my house, and the deer and dogmen were in my backyard. I decided right then that I could never live in this house anymore. So I ran inside, grabbed money, ran back out, and drove halfway up north before I calmed down. The area was right where Fields of the Woods is, if you want to know. I'm in East Tennessee. I was just out driving down a road I've never been down before, just out of curiosity. As I went down the road, I saw a few abandoned trailers, an old rundown church, and then an odd building next to it, but the road started to get a bit ducky, like it was just very overgrown. I decided to make a turn, did it in the middle of the road, and as I started to drive back down the road, I was looking at the buildings one last time, looking at the church. I saw something staring at me, it was about three quarters ths the way up the side of the church in height, so probably like 8 to 12 feet tall, was all white, and god the ducking eyes, I can't get them out of my mind. They were deep, extremely reflective black. I made eye contact with it. I nearly started crying immediately. I put the pedal on the floor so ducking fast that I completely ignored most road laws on the way home. I probably won't be getting much sleep. This was about 10 minutes or less from my home. The woods are a magical place. I've seen some weird lights in the sky, ghosts, strange markings and carvings on trees, a possible seance or sacrifice site, and straight up weird shit. This is one of my favorites, it's the most plausible scenario for some non-normal shit happening. My family has some property east of Nashville in Jackson County on some mountainous terrain. I was working, cutting timber and breaking stone, one day in the beginning of summer, just me and my cousin, when we kept hearing what sounded like something hitting the trunks of trees. At first, the sounds were far off, then they started getting closer. My cousin had the idea of going to explore the woods to see what that sound could have been when, all of a sudden, a rock a little smaller than a tennis ball landed about five feet from me. My cousin had a perplexed look on his face while staring at the rock when another rock hit the tree behind us about 10 feet away. Then we noticed a smell that could knock a raven off of a shit bucket. Imagine old eggs and rotten tomatoes in a blender. It was a wild smell that came out of nowhere. Then the sound hit us, echoing off the rock behind us. I literally pissed my pants. It was like a man shrieking at the top of his lungs and quickly dying out. Needless to say, we booked it for the truck and hightailed it back home. Due to the sightings of bobcats and wild Russian boars in the area, I carried a 9mm handgun. I immediately pulled it out. I don't believe it was human treason, as our property was close to 200 acres with high cliffs, steep drop-offs, and a pretty isolated area. Later on that day, we told our uncle what had happened. He told us the rock-throwing thing is how Bigfoot marks his territory, and they stink like shit because his ass is matted with dingleberries. Both are believable. He also told us that those things happen to him all the time and that he and whatever it is have an understanding of each other. That is not so believable. This was around 2007. In San Antonio, Texas. I have three children, now adults. Me and my daughter went out to get Starbucks around 9 p.m. at that time, I had a house in North San Antonio, Stone Oak. So we left with our cold drinks and went driving on a northern route, where I've done over 14k miles on a bicycle. I was an avid cyclist at the time we are at a stop sign. And go over the road, the forward road is very dark. My headlights hit what we thought was a human with its lower portion gone. Entrails. I stop and hit my high beams. I we were about 25 yards away from it. So we watch this human with his lower portion completely gone, and I can see entrails. Halfway across the road, it morphs into a possum. Both me and my daughter, 16 at the time, say, what the duck? It scampers into the woods after crossing the road. A few years ago, I was going through Marine combat training around Jacksonville, North Carolina, and I saw something that still bothers me to this day. I am what most would consider a skeptic, I don't believe in Bigfoot, werewolves, ghost stories, etc. 
but this thing creeped me out. It was roughly 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., and we were practicing night patrols through some very dense woods in a very large and uninhabited training area. We were also utilizing night vision devices that only covered one eye, leaving the other to see naturally. I was the second man in the column behind our point guy, and ahead of him was our combat instructor, a normally level-headed and fun sergeant about halfway through our patrol, we got the signal to stop, and I immediately felt a very strange presence, energy, or whatever. The instructor pointed at a bush about five-ish feet from my right leg, so I and the marine in front of me looked at it, and both of our night vision devices went nuts, so we pulled them up onto our helmets. Laying in the bush was a weird human-like figure that we initially thought was another instructor trying to mess with us. So we threw a rock at it and yelled for it to go away. At this point, a very tall, seven to eight feet, and lanky figure stood up. It was white, and I couldn't make out any real facial features. As far as I could tell, there was no hair, resembling a grayish-white alien. It turned very stiffly, took two steps, and seemed to vanish into thin air. We all looked at each other, bewildered, and the sergeant told us to just never speak of it again and keep moving. We were the only three that saw it or had any idea what was going on. Anyone have a clue what was in those coastal North Carolina woods? I swear this story is very real, and every detail is exactly as I remember it. No exaggerations or embellishments. When I was a kid, my dad was a long-distance delivery driver in the UK. Occasionally, he'd bring me along on his trips, which would usually last about three or four days. The procedure was that we'd leave him at 4 a.m. to be at the depot at 5 a.m., get the truck, and be on the road by 5.30 a.m. One morning, we'd left the depot in the truck. A beautiful early summer's morning. We're driving along a country lane to get to the main road. Either side of us were hedgerows, about four or five high, they were level with the windows of the cab. As we're going, a big black cat, like, a big cat, leaps over the hedge on the left, darts across the road, and vaults the hedge on the right. I've always thought there was a lot of truth to alien big cat sightings in the UK anyway, but actually seeing one was pretty cool. I sometimes wonder if it was just my younger brain exaggerating things, but I've asked my dad about it again a couple times in the 15 years since, and he just says as well that it was definitely a big cat of some description. This happened a few years ago, so the details are kind of hazy. I was moving into a new house, and I was staying with my grandmother on my mother's side of the family while we moved. While I was staying there, I was helping with the chores, and I had forgotten to feed the dogs the night before, so I went out to feed them early in the morning. It had rained the night before, so everything was kind of grey and foggy, and I was going to the big Doberman pincher she had, and as I was walking there, I noticed he was asleep on the ground, which was weird as it had rained all night long. Ignoring it, I went to dump his food into his bowl, and when I started pouring it into something not too far off, I ran extremely fast into the woods. It was pale white and had four legs, and from what I remember, it was humanoid in shape with a flat back like a person, and it was fast enough to be a blur to my eyes. I was so freaked out that I ran into the house and told everyone, but they said it was probably just an albino deer or something, but it doesn't make sense that it was too fast for a deer, and it was shorter than a deer by a lot, and there haven't been any albino deer in this part of Virginia in years. This is extremely similar to what someone else saw as they were driving down the road. They saw something similar to what I saw, but they called it a flesh gate. My brother and his friends were walking back home through the woods when they all heard the snap of a branch. When they turned around to see what it was, they could see the silhouette of a person at the top of the hill, about 100 meters away from where they had just walked down. They watched as it quickly tried to hide behind a tree. My brother and his friends all asked each other if they had all just seen that, to which they all replied yes. As they all continued to stare, my brother's eyes finally managed to focus within the difficult lighting, as it was night time and dark. He then described that he could see a head peeking from behind the tree, but in an unusual way. It seemed to be tall and the motion of the head moving was different. This is when it gets terrifying. The thing steps out of the tree completely and stands at the top of the hill, almost as if it decides, I've been seen. I need to do something, type of attitude. It's almost like a fight or flight attitude. My brother said that this is when the overwhelming fear kicked in because they could all see now that the build of this thing couldn't be a person. He described it as being tall, skinny, with gangly, long arms, and having your typical alien-shaped head. And now, to make things even worse, the thing starts to charge down the hill and into the field, surrounded by trees, where my brother and his friends are. He also said that the pace of the creature was definitely not human, as it gained ground very quickly. So obviously, my brother and his friends turned tail and began to run for what it felt like, their lives. He did not want to turn around and look, as he was completely focused on getting away. 
My brother said, as they were running he could hear it stumble now and again, and he could also hear the footsteps gaining on them, giving him a good idea of the pace of this thing, which he emphasized was how scary it was. As they approached the village, they come to the end of the field, where a street lamp glows on the edge of the field. He said once they got into the light, the creature came to an abrupt stop, as if it was scared of the light or that it did not want to be completely revealed. My brother and his friends kept running until they got home. I asked my brother's friends about the incident, and they all still expressed how scary it was. My brother and I love wild camping. Once, the night before the day we were going to go camping, we stupidly began to talk about that night. We ended up not going camping because we creeped each other out so badly that we feared we might see the creature again while camping. I am ex-military, so as you know, I have done my fair share of sleeping and camping in the woods. That's how scary this is to us. The level of detail and the fear in my brother's face and voice while he tells me of the night reinforced the fact that it actually happened. I'd say I was six, maybe seven, and it was midday. It was fairly bright out too. I was sitting on my uncle's lap, we were out and sitting on a lawn chair. Note that it is an extremely woodsy area, crammed with trees. We sat, talking, and just looking around and enjoying the weather. And that was when I noticed something moving out of the corner of my eye. Being the naturally curious child I was, I turned my head quickly to get a good look at the thing. I squinted my eyes. From what I could tell, it was extremely tall, and I mean tall. My height guess would be maybe 12 feet tall, but then again, it was a decent distance away, so I could get an exact idea. But what I did know was that it was a skinny, bony creature. Its joints bulged out enough for me to even tell from where I was sitting. It was shaped somewhat like a person, so it was standing on two legs, but its limbs and everything were abnormal to it. And it wasn't wearing any clothes, but that's the thing, the creature didn't have any genitals, it was just, really weird. Hell, even six-year-old me knew this. But I wasn't scared, not in the slightest. As a matter of fact, I tried squirming out of my uncle's arms, pointing at the creature, and asking him to let me go to it. He laughed, and while looking in its direction, he said, he looks kind of like you, doesn't he? And I furrowed my eyebrows. What's that supposed to mean? I was extremely skinny at the time and never ate much. I, however, knew for a fact that I looked nothing like that. And clearly, he could see the tall, looming figure slowly making his way across. This made me angrier, and I squirmed more that he wasn't letting me run to it. Tiny me eventually gave up and just watched the thing slowly walk across and into another patch of cluttered trees, where he disappeared. My uncle never brought up the experience again, and neither did I. This happened long ago but I know what I saw, whatever it was. It's still a vibrant memory in my mind. My childhood was strange. I have many other weird experiences, but I decided to start with one of the first. To this day, I still wish I could have chased it. I don't know why, but I had an overwhelming urge to run to it. Maybe then I would understand. Childhood is strange, but I think mine sits in the special category. I've always had weird stuff happen to me or be around when it happens to others. At this point, I'd almost consider it just me having terrible luck. I've told many people around me this story, and they just always say, oh, you were too young to really know for sure what you saw was real. It must have been, surely? I mean, hell, my uncle even saw it. My good friend claims to have seen a creature in Wall Township, New Jersey. In 2013, around 11.30 p.m., he was picking up a friend from a house party. Across the street from the house were woods. While he was waiting for his friend to come out, he saw something come out of the woods. He says it was mostly humanoid, maybe about seven feet tall. It was very lean. It had pale skin and was hairless. Its head was small in proportion to its body. It had large, but not gray alien large, totally black eyes. No nose. It had backward knees. Its arms were very long, almost touching the ground. He said the creature kind of skulked around and went into a deep crouch when it noticed him looking at it. After a kind of stare down, my friend yelled at the creature, and it ran back into the woods. Any ideas, folks? It's been haunting him for years. Okay, so I'm from Lower Middle Tennessee, and my grandmother used to tell me the story about a creature she called a whistling jack. The story she told me was that whistling jack was a large, bipedal, black panther. She said that it would sound like a woman crying, and that was how it would lure victims into the woods. My grandmother claimed that one evening, when she was around 12 or 13, she was home alone with her brothers and sister when they heard what she thought was a woman crying outside the house. She said she looked out the windows but couldn't see anyone outside. The sound continued, and then she discovered that it was coming from around the fireplace and sounded as if someone was stuck inside the chimney. 
She said that she went outside and looked up at the roof of the house where the chimney came out and saw a large black panther walking on two legs on the roof, and it had been peering down into the chimney. My grandma ran back inside, locked the doors and windows, and closed the chimney. She used furniture and blankets to further block off the fireplace, and she hid all of her siblings in a closet until their parents arrived back home. This story has stuck with me as I've grown up, and I've recently been doing research to see if anyone else has ever heard of a whistling jack or if there were any other similar sightings, and so far, I've not really found anything. A good friend I lived with for several years who was born and raised in Lebanon, right near Sugar Flats Road, and he told me the first story I'd ever heard about that particular cryptid. He and two other family members saw one run through his backyard. If I'm remembering correctly, he said it was around 5 feet 6 inches minus 6 or so in white fur. And it ran extremely fast through the yard from one tree line to the other within 20 yards and let out a horrible howl. He didn't talk about it lightly and was visibly shaken just recounting the story. A few years ago, I lived in a 1,000 plus acre nature preserve in Middle Tennessee for a year and a half. I'm not sure if this counts as a cryptid by definition, but there were red wolves there. At least that's the closest documented animal I could find, and there have definitely been covert red wolf repopulation programs in parts of Tennessee. I saw one on two separate occasions, but I heard them hunt in packs many more times. That place is absolutely strange and spooky. I spent a lot of time exploring the caves and cedar barrens around there, but this is the only place I've ever been where I would absolutely not go far into the woods after dark. In my opinion, it has tons of potential for large cryptids or anything else you could imagine. It is also in the center of one of the most cave-dense areas in the world. I believe I saw a creature. I have been battling with even telling someone about this because I'm terrified of being called crazy or a liar. I just need to know if anyone has seen something like this and how to deal with it. A few months ago, I was in upstate New York. I was in the woods, going for a long walk. It was a pretty pleasant morning, with a little bit of morning fog. I normally don't follow this path because it's much longer than the usual path I take. I was about 30 minutes into this walk when I started to hear noises, like something rattling the trees up ahead. I was hesitant because there are black bears and possibly even cougars. Very rarely, but still, I waited to see if anything was going to come out, but after a few minutes, the noise stopped completely. I chalked it up to the wind, but I still felt uneasy. I soon entered a clearing and felt some relief, thinking I'd be able to see if any wildlife decided to check me out. I walked to the center of the clearing, and when I heard a sound from the woods, I just left. That's when I saw it. At first, I thought it was a bear, and I froze. It was crouched over, pawing at something. It kind of crouch walked to a low point in the grass. That's when I knew it wasn't a bear. I made a few side steps while trying to back up. That's when it noticed me. It stood up on its legs and just stared at me. I have never felt more afraid and helpless in my life. We just stood there for a minute. It then picked up a branch that was near it and dragged it into the woods. It disappeared. I heard a single whacking sound come from the forest. That's when I ran. I made it back to my car in record time and froze up again. I have never felt this way before. When I replayed it in my head, I just thought to myself that it must have been a hunter in a ghillie suit, so I shouldn't think about it too much. I then drove off. But I keep thinking about it. The more I do, the more I know it was a hunter. It had black and brown fur. I could see its eyes, and they almost looked human. It had to be over six feet tall and have human-like features. But that's the problem. It was a human. Not unless it was all makeup and a costume. This event has consumed my life for the last few months, and I'm trying to move past it. Has anyone else here experienced something like this? What did you do to get back to normal? How did you rationalize it? Am I just hallucinating? I know it doesn't seem smart to just ask internet strangers, but I truly do not want to worry my family. I was about six years old when this happened, but my recollection of what I'm about to write is crystal clear. It doesn't have the same fuzzy, uncertain quality that childhood memories sometimes have. I know, for a fact, that I didn't dream of it. I will never forget the thing I saw. My father and I were driving in his pickup truck at dusk. We were on a major road in Philadelphia, Ridge Avenue, for those familiar with the area. One of my dad's friends had called him for help, the guy was stranded on the side of the road with a dead battery. We were heading to the rescue with a set of jumper cables. My dad spotted his friend's car down a side street and pulled his truck over. Dense wood stretched out to the right side of the road, and the bright orange street lamps that had just flickered on cast a sickly hue over everything. My dad instructed me sternly to wait in the car, we were in a sketchy area of town, and he was playing it safe. He grabbed the jumper cables, got out of the truck, and got to work. Several minutes went by in what seemed like slow motion. 
I don't know how long it actually was, but it felt like an eternity. I was starting to feel nervous in the truck by myself. The sky was growing darker by the minute, and I was starting to wonder what was happening out there that was taking so long. I knew my dad had told me to stay put, but I felt compelled to get out. I had to get out of the truck and see my dad, just to reassure myself that he was still there and that everything was okay. I opened the door and got out. I peered around the raised hood of the truck and looked for my dad. The friend's car and my dad's Toyota were still connected by jumper cables, and the jump had been successful, both engines were roaring. But nobody was there. My heart began to pound. Where was my dad? Why wasn't he here? I stumbled around to the rear of the truck to see if he had gone back there for some reason. Nothing. Nobody. I was alone and growing more frightened by the second. My dad's Toyota was enormous compared to my six-year-old body. I couldn't see over the bed of the truck. I couldn't see what was around the corner as I turned around to continue looking. I cleared the corner and was facing the woods, and then I stopped dead in my tracks. I saw something. Something horrible. Something incomprehensible. I was standing about four feet away from what I can only describe as the thorax of an enormous insect. The orange streetlights were reflected in their awful, shiny carapace. It glistened with some kind of moisture, almost like sweat. And when I say this was an enormous insect, I mean that this thing was roughly the same size as I was. It had two impossibly long, striated rear legs. It had a set of spindly, unnatural front legs that reminded me of a praying mantis. It was moving, I was frozen in place. Unable to move a muscle. I had forgotten all about my dad. There was only me and this unholy thing that was moving slowly and laboriously into the overgrown brush that bordered the woods. Then, without warning, it stopped moving. It knew I was there. It slowly turned its triangular head, a head I hadn't seen until this point. It had two enormous black bug eyes. Once again, I could see the reflection of the streetlights in those eyes. It made them look like they were burning as they watched me. I couldn't breathe. Couldn't move. Couldn't run. I knew it was futile. Then, in an instant, it turned away from me and darted into the blackness of the woods. My dad's voice broke the trance I was in. He was furious that I'd gotten out of the truck. Ordered me back in immediately. I've never moved faster. I never told him what I saw. In fact, I've never told anyone what I saw until now. But I know it was real. I had a childhood friend, Johnny, whom I'd sometimes play with. We weren't the closest, but we were part of the same church, so we occasionally spent time at each other's houses. He lived outside of town, in a large house that sat near the woods. This wasn't at all strange to me, as many of my friends at the time, if not most, lived in similar circumstances. So it naturally became standard to play outside, hiking around the property, the woods, or the large field in front of the house, wherever. Johnny had a little brother, Stephen, who'd sometimes want to tag along. Frankly, I don't really remember much of how we'd play. Pretend, mostly, I'd assume. This was the early 90s, none of us were from particularly well-off families, and imagination was dirt cheap. You know, sometimes I really wish I could write off what I see as imagination. It'd be easier. This happened during one summer, all those years ago. Johnny, Stephen, and I were doing our usual walking around, talking, and playing pretend down at the bottom of one of the large fields that surrounded the house. I can remember how hot it was. The grass around us had long since dried. There was a sour smell in the air from all the pungent weeds and shrubs surrounding us. The only things that remained green were the abundant brambles of blackberries that grew in huge, towering clusters off to one side of the property. I can remember there was this little, rotting shack made of dilapidated boards down there, and that's where we were. Playing right near it in the blackberries. I had wandered just a bit away from them. It couldn't have been more than 10 feet. That's when I glanced away, and I saw it. There was something in the blackberry bushes. I couldn't tell what it was, but I reacted as best as my childhood mind would allow me to and dug behind a nearby shrub out of fear. Now keep in mind that these blackberry bushes in front of me weren't small. Such clusters can often climb small trees and grow into a sort of wall of thorny bushes. These were probably anywhere from 8 to 10 feet high. And whatever this thing was, it towered over them by at least a couple of feet. I could see its whole upper torso, arms, and head. It had thick, black fur. It was clearly standing on two legs, and at that second, it looked like it was reaching for something. Now, I'm sure at this second, you're probably thinking, okay, so this person saw a bear eating berries as a kid, really scary. But this thing wasn't a bear. I was raised near the woods. I was young, but I'd seen plenty of animals. This thing wasn't a bear. Its shoulders, arms, and face looked very humanoid. 
but it was somehow distorted. Evil looking. Frankly, the thought my young mind had at the time was, demon. The thing that was most striking, though, were its eyes. They were red. Stark. Red. I'm sure the text sounds cartoonish, but to a child, it might as well have been that death was right in front of me. And it did have that vibe. This thing was terrifying, and something inside me told me that if I didn't run right then, I might not make it. I bolted for the house, screaming for Johnny and Stephen to run with me. They did, acting either on instinct at the sound of my voice or just playing along with the moment. At least, I suspect Johnny was. Playing along, that is. Stephen, being younger, seemed to pick up on my fear and was screaming for real as we all booked it to the house. The wind was so intensely whipping by my ears that I couldn't really hear if the creature was in pursuit, but I dared not look back. Finally, we reached the safety of the house's deck and quickly ran inside. I tried to explain what happened to Johnny's parents. All about the demon I saw in the blackberry bushes. Of course, they treated me like a dumb kid. My parents seemed to entertain the idea that I saw something, but not that it was supernatural. I've spent my life casually trying to understand what happened. Every couple of years, the memory resurfaces like a reoccurring nightmare that never quite leaves you. The cynic in me insists that it was a bear or nothing. A figment of an overactive imagination. We did like to play pretend, after all. And it was very hot that day. Not to mention, clearly, berries would explain the presence of a bear. But again, I knew the shape of a bear. And I've never heard of a hallucination that lasts a long time and can be viewed from multiple angles. I've dabbled in a little missing 411 information over the years, and there have been reports of certain cryptids that match. I forgot the name, and I just tried looking it up but couldn't find it, but apparently there's a type of rumored Sasquatch that is larger than normal and is said to have red eyes and an inclination towards carnivorism and aggression. Apparently, the legend goes that they like to twist people's heads off. As for what I actually saw, I suppose I'll never know. But I'll say this much, I hope I never see it again. I don't know if anyone has experienced something similar or maybe can shed light on something that I've constantly been thinking about for the past 12 years. Growing up, my family spent summers in northern Arizona. The summer after I turned 16, I got my first job as a bus girl at a local diner, and after closing one night, I decided to take a drive around town before going home, still at the age when driving alone is exciting. At one point, I pulled up to an intersection and noticed a house with a driveway and bushes that lined the driveway. What caught my eye was a moving, childlike creature. At first, I thought it was a lawn decoration, but it started moving up the border. Then I thought it was a weird animal, but it was walking up the driveway in a robotic manner. I was immediately spooked and drove home, I definitely wasn't drunk or high. I've always chalked it up to being a toy, but it was so lifelike. I've never stopped thinking about how weird it was, and I think with quarantine, I've been using time to research what else it could be. There were even a couple days where I researched toys that fit the description. I've never told the story to anyone in my life because it sounds insane, but I just keep thinking about it and need to get it off my chest. My mom, brother, and I were driving over a highway overpass one night a few years ago, and this big black hairless creature jumped over the side of the overpass, ran on all fours in front of our car and a few others, jumped over the dividing median but grabbed it with its front feet, ran in front of the other cars on the other side of the highway, then jumped down the other side of the overpass. This thing had really long, skinny front legs and very short back legs. It was skinny, and when our headlights were on it, it turned its head to look at the traffic coming towards it. Its face was creepily long, almost like that of a horse or a big deer. It was just weird, and it didn't look like anything my mom or I had ever seen before. This was like 10 years ago, and I've been trying to come up with every idea of what it could have been, a manged black bear, some strange manged wolf, a black manged coyote, or something else, but nothing looks like it at all. The head, though, is what ducks with me. It was much too big and long for the body. My mom and I saw it and slammed on the brakes like other drivers next to us. We were freaking out trying to figure out what we just saw, while my brother was in the back seat trying to figure out what happened because he didn't see it but saw everyone hitting their brakes and slamming their horns. This happened in Silverdale, Washington. My friend and I are avid outdoorsmen who enjoy primitive camping, hiking, etc. There is this local county park with a weird or spooky history. Lots of people with odd sightings, menacing experiences, reportedly witchcraft, you get the idea. Well, we were hiking there and decided to follow a couple game trails, we wanted to get away from the casual hikers and really explore the more unexplored parts of the forest. We had gone several miles in and came to an area with a lower bush line, so our visibility was pretty good. All of a sudden, 
a storm of acorns erupted around us, with no wind to speak of. After this incident occurred, we had this overwhelming sense of being watched. We had gone another several hundred yards when my friend called out, what is that? And when I looked towards what he was pointing at, we saw this dark humanoid shape standing by a tree. It was around four feet long, dark brown to black in color, and seemed to get highly agitated when I took notice of it. The only way to describe its movement was that it was lightly bouncing back and forth, giving off an aggressive vibe. Instinctively, we both pulled out our knives, my friend also pulled out his axe, and we felt combat was inevitable. It keeps watching us, emanating this aggressive energy. For some reason, we decided to move towards it. What happened next, I cannot explain. It simply disappeared. Once we both see it disappear, we make a beeline to the tree it was at, we can be stupid and brave, and there is no sign or sound of anything being there. We look around and find nothing. There was no way for it to have gotten away without making a sign or even making noise, as the brush wouldn't have allowed that. Sheathing our weapons, we stood there dumbstruck, not sure what had just happened. Once, when my family and I were living with my aunt and her family, my brother and older cousins swear they saw the Mothman. My aunt, uncle, and mom were going to the store around 8 p.m. one night, and I, not wanting to be stuck in the house with my brother, a male cousin, and their two male friends, went with the adults. We had been gone for at most two hours, and when we pulled into the driveway, all four boys sprinted out of the house, terrified. Two of them had shotguns, and immediately our parents demanded to know what happened. This group of boys from the ages of 10 to 14 were in tears, all trying to explain at once. Eventually, we got them to calm down enough to understand what they were saying. For reference, my aunt and uncle's home is in a very rural part of town. They have a bit of wood and a creek we can see from the back porch, and there is a fire pit halfway between the porch and the creek. So anyway, the boys said they opened the sliding back door and sat with their feet hanging out because they wanted a breeze. Then my brother noticed two red eyes glowing in the dark. All being hunters, they weren't frightened at first, thinking it might be an animal, but when they looked harder, they knew it wasn't. It was shaped like a large man. It had casually leaned against the tree it was standing next to and waved. The boys started to freak out, and right before two of them went to go get their guns, it jumped, revealing large wings that spanned the width of its arms, and flew mere feet above the ground to stand by the fire pit. My brother said he didn't move, that he and this creature locked eyes, and he was paralyzed. By the time our cousin and their friend came back with the dual shotguns, it was gone. My brother said it was there, and, in a blink of an eye, it just wasn't. They took this as a good sign, closed the back door, and huddled in the living room until we got back. Now, mind you, these boys don't scare easily, they have been hunting most of their lives. They've killed deer, bears, and wild boar, pretty much any animal that could kill you ten times over. These boys were mortified. I'm not sure if any of them even slept that night. They weren't okay for a few weeks after that. It's been almost ten years since this happened, and to this day, both my brother and our cousin won't joke about it. They get nervous anytime it's brought up and demand that we please don't talk about it. I'm in Dixon, and there've been some strange occurrences over the years I've lived there, but most of them are closer to temporary hauntings. Most. Among those that don't fall into that category. There's something around here capable of mimicry, but there are no foul smells or attacks. Something with a short, fat tail and pale white skin, no fur, has been seen in trees, large bushes, around chicken or duck coops, barns, and on the occasional roof, eating or attacking birds at night. It's believed to be a rake. Only birds have ever been found dead, ripped apart, and partially or mostly eaten. There are a pair of very large black birds with white legs and feet around here. That alone sounds like a vulture, right? Well, when I say very large, I mean a 15 wingspan. They have fully feathered heads and have been seen swooping down on groundhogs, small dogs, young goats, and rabbits. The vultures and crows in the area are both actively afraid of them and will fly off if they perch anywhere near them. They also really like flying in strong wind storms, including those capable of straight line winds or that produce tornadoes, but they don't fly in heavy rain. Theories range from them being thunderbirds to a re-emergence of the ancient species of condor to a new hybrid of some sort, similar to growler bears or the new species of leopard seal-sized seal spotted off the North Atlantic coast. I've also spotted a baseball-sized floating light that pulses a larger glow effect every so often, is capable of moving rather fluidly through the air, and causes lights near it to dim whenever it pulses the larger glow effect. We also have low-flying planes where I live, despite not being close enough to an airport to justify it. That said, every so often, usually around 4.40 am, 
there is what can be best described as a grown tube type of noise, but deeper, slower, and clearly associated with an aircraft of some sort that starts off low in the distance, gets louder, hangs for about 20s, and then reverses, as if turning the tube back the other way. The issue is that I have been outside when it occurs, and on a clear night, yet I have seen nothing, not even a plane. And then there's the occasional sightings of Bigfoot, a giant black wolf matching the description of the one seen in the story of Skinwalker Ranch, werewolves, dogman, mothman, and skinwalkers, this area, among others in Tennessee, were major battlefields between settlers and natives. Though I've not actually had an encounter with or seen any of them myself. I can go as in-depth as I need to because this just freaked me out so bad. I don't know what's going on here or what could be up with this, but this weird whistling just keeps happening. One day it was just my boyfriend's little brother and me outside, and everything went silent, and then this weird whistling started. It sounded like a bird but also almost like an echo, or more like, recorded? I live out in the woods, and it sounded almost like something trying to copy a bird. I was just home alone, and everything was quiet until the whistling started. Every time it's happened, the woods go dead silent. Last time it happened, it was just the whistling, but I heard something outside. I popped out to see if maybe it was just someone making it home, but nobody was out there. The woods were silent up until I heard the whistling and then something that sounded very heavy, like a large animal. The whistling was going on the whole time, and it just kept getting louder and louder. By the time I got inside, it sounded like the whistling was practically right outside the door, but I looked out the window and nothing was there. It stopped out of nowhere, and coincidentally, it was around the time everyone made it home. I'm still a little creeped out because I have no idea what was up with that. I don't know what was going on, so any insights would be appreciated. My encounter with three different humanoid creatures. Pixie, it was night, and I was talking to two friends in front of the house of one of them when I turned around and noticed that in the middle of a place with grass, there was a small humanoid with a humanoid plant body. Looking at me, she had eyes and a mouth, and as soon as I saw it, I was surprised, but I was not afraid, it was looking at me with a proud look, weird. I gave it a smile and then ignored it. I'm the one who saw this creature because I did not tell them about it, I did not want to. These days I was researching elemental creatures and I would say that this creature was a pixie and this is the encounter that makes me the most curious, because I was calm and this creature seemed to know me somehow. Dogman, this happened on the same day I saw the pixie, only later. It was night, and I was walking with my friend in an empty street when we saw a being in a grassy terrain that looked like a half-man, half-dog, beige color. He was sitting, and he seemed to have no fur. I noticed that he seemed to be more scared than us, he had a strange body, half human and half dog, and he had snouts and human eyes. Unfortunately, I cannot say exactly because it was very weird and I was freaking scared. My friend said that he had an orange cone on his head, but I do not remember noticing it. We stared at him for about 4 seconds, and then we ran. He did not look like the typical furry werewolf, I'd say he was more of a shapeshifter. That was a very strange day, unfortunately, I do not know exactly the date, and sometimes I wonder if it was the full moon or any special date. Little Elf I woke up at night and saw a white little elf, I think he was about 11 centimeters, on my belly, similar to Dobby from Harry Potter, a little less ugly, I would say, he was not looking at me, he seemed to be curious, like he was searching for something, he had no fur and had smooth skin, he did not wear clothes, and I do not remember the rest. I don't know what happened, and I don't think it was a dream. These encounters were about 3 years ago, I would say. The first two were on the same day, and the last one was after a few weeks. I had an encounter that remained a mystery for me for several years. It was a monster encounter, not a cryptid one, and I was less than 3 meters, 10 freedom units, from it. Sitting in a car, I just barely managed to stop. It was during a night north of Brno, in the southernmost place, that animals could make a crossing in an east-west direction in Europe without encountering a river too deep to cross. This has been a geographical crossroad since prehistory for humans and animals. It was one of the most mysterious encounters you can imagine and it shocked me. If you care about animals, do not read the explanation and just enjoy what I considered a mystery for several years. It was dark already, and I was driving back home. I was already near the suburban area when suddenly a huge beast came from the November mist and stepped on the road. The headlights could not properly shine on the body. It was like the body swallowed the light instead of reflecting it. Parts seemed to be covered in extremely long hair, parts covered in weird plates of some sort, almost like a grey misshapen exoskeleton. The beast was standing on four legs, I did not see their bottom part as I stopped my car, almost touching them. The beast was enormous. The back of it was higher than the top of the head of a human, 
and the head was much higher still. I was sitting in a terrain car, and I was looking up at it. The head was huge and long, but without any facial features. I saw no eye, no mouth. The neck was incredibly thick, and the lower part was obviously covered in hair. The rib cage was enormous, it was impossible to tell where it ended and where the hair started. The stomach was not illuminated by the headlights, it looked like there weren't any. The whole animal looked like a cartoon exaggeration of a werewolf. After I stopped, it turned its faceless head slightly towards me, then returned to look right in front of it, and by two or three steps, it walked across the road and ended up in the field on the other side of the road. A few seconds later, its shape disappeared in the misty darkness. I didn't dare to investigate, I just drove away. There are not supposed to be any animals this size in the wild. We have foxes and wild boars, some deer, and sometimes a baboon from the local zoo runs away, he likes these adventures and usually visits nearby gardens and stays with the people there until the police come to take him back to the zoo. In the east, several pumas escaped from private owners, and there were some wolves reintroduced to the wild, but that's about it. No large beast of this type should exist. Not anywhere, especially not in the densely populated Czech Republic, a country where you can't physically be further away from the nearest pub than two hours by foot. We have folklore like the forest wildmen, watermen, dwarves, and black fire hounds, but not anything like this. All the people I told this story to either dismissed it outright or those who knew me better and realized that I do not tend to lie tried to come up with some explanation but failed. So about two years ago, I was with a friend, and we were living in Tally at the time, and we decided to drive towards Thomasville, Georgia, to get out of town. After about 45 minutes to an hour of driving, we come across a field. It's pretty big, and we're sitting at a bench discussing stuff, and suddenly this creature darts out of the forest and stops in the middle of the field. It was about 200 to 300 yards away, so it looked small, but the closer I got to it, the bigger I realized it was, so I estimate its shoulder blades coming up to about 4.5 minus 5 feet. It had all four legs, and the legs and body looked like those of a deer, but it had a long, thick neck like a wolf, the head of a fox, and the tail of a wolf. It had shaggy-like hair, it was also pure white, it glowed. There were no lights out, and the moon was full, and it glowed in the moonlight. Eventually my friend yelled at me to stop, and the creature saw me, and we looked at each other for a couple of seconds, and then it darted back into the woods, covering the 200 to 300 yards in a couple of seconds. When it moved, the legs moved kind of in slow motion, and it glided over the ground, it didn't really affect the ground it was on. And it was silent, it made no noise. I'm wondering if anyone else in North Florida has ever seen it, if anyone has ever encountered it, or if anyone knows what it might be. I saw a weird creature in the woods. It was a rainy day when me and some of my friends, let's call them Lucas, Jerry, and Paul, went to the woods for a camping weekend. I'm also from Russia, so I'm sorry for my bad English. Anyway, we got there, and I was the one who was driving, so I parked the car next to the entrance in the woods so it could be easier for us to find the car. We got our stuff ready, such as our tents, sleeping bags, etc., and we needed to make the fire before it'd get darker. Lucas said he's going to go search for some sticks with Jerry, and they'll be back in a few minutes, while me and Paul were just chilling, waiting for them to come back so we could make the fire so we could eat some marshmallows. They got back so fast forward that we had already eaten something, and we were telling horror stories to keep the horror ambience going because it was dark and only our fire was making light. Paul told a story about a creature that was living in the woods and liked eating everything it saw. It's usually active at night and searches for campers like us. At first, we got goosebumps, but no one believed him because it was a legend, so we remained silent so he could continue the story. Fast forward through the story. Lucas fell asleep, so we went to sleep too. I was sleeping with Paul and Jerry with Lucas, everyone was sleeping, but at 2.12 am I woke up and looked at my phone and saw the clock, so that's why I know the time. I heard a sound outside that sounded like a growl, but I thought it was a bear or something, and maybe he got there because we left our food at the fire, and I wouldn't be bothered if he would have eaten the food as long as he wasn't about to eat us. I grabbed my flashlight and went outside. I looked with the flashlight through the trees, but they were empty. Just when I was about to go back to sleep, I realized that Lucas and Jerry weren't there anymore, so I went to wake up Paul. In that moment, we both heard their screams, so we quickly went to where the screaming was coming from and we turned into stone when we saw a big creature with red bloody eyes and an evil face that was about to eat them. In that moment, we heard a gunshot that scared the creature away, so our friends were fine, and me and Paul took them to the car and started driving home as fast as we could, but on the way back home, we saw the creature following us with an amazing speed, and we were all scared for our lives, but we somehow managed to escape alive. 
I'll never forget the creature's bloody eyes with a goat's face looking evil. We're all fine, and we'll never go camping again, and we managed to make that story Paul told us true. I know this story isn't too creepy, but it was very creepy for us to live through those moments. In 1999, I was 7 years old, playing in the woods with my friend Charlotte. We were standing at each end of a big log in the woods when I noticed movement in my peripherals. I tried focusing my periphery to catch a detailed look, I see similar movement often when we're in the woods, and it always disappears, more like scatters, before I turn to look. My heart skipped a beat when I could make out a group of little people looking up at me as well. I was frozen in the pose I was playing in, and after a few seconds, I realized Charlotte had stopped narrating the play and was frozen in place as well, staring at me but focusing on them. I'm pretty sure they were dressed because it didn't look like they were all naked. I could tell they knew we were aware of them, and they dispersed as Charlotte moved her eyes. We didn't talk about it until we were in her house, we weren't afraid, just confused on our walk home. We wrote out what we saw before talking about it, to see if we saw the same thing. Unfortunately, both our descriptions were so vague, but clothed, less than a foot, for sure. One thing we were positive of was to mind our business and not go searching, which is what our instinct would have usually been. We thought we had found a colony of little people in the woods. But the fact that our reaction was to quietly leave and not even talk about it until behind closed doors, and still not even talk out loud but write it. I don't remember being too frightened, in fact, we kind of just accepted it and moved on with a new taste of what this world and universe are capable of. I watched the Indian in the cupboard later in life, which reminded me of these little people, but I no longer saw them by then. Charlotte and I would talk about seeing things out of the corner of our eyes, but we could never figure out what they were. Although Charlotte was different, she and her dad were huge hippies, tire swing in the kitchen, no TV, and her imagination was so wildly magnificent that it made my mind radiate. I always thought that maybe her narration of our play was so powerful and energetic that we could manifest and see the same thing. Little people were never playing any part in either of our imaginations, in fact, when we both confirmed what each other saw, we were kind of in awe that we've never even dreamt of tiny people in this universe. Where I grew up in a farming community, there was no shortage of strange stories. One in particular was told by an old farmhand named Otis. He lived in a log cabin on a farm near my house. He never strayed from there unless someone picked him up to lend a hand somewhere. Otis was the go-to man for anyone who needed anything done around the house. He rarely even asked for pay, as long as he had enough Prince Albert tobacco. We were having a family gathering one weekend in the mid-70s when Otis showed up with his story. He lived on two farms to the north of me. Next to him was a large wooded area, then the Maharan River. He told us that he had walked down to the river to hunt for squirrels. When he got to the bank, he heard something on the opposite bank. He said that a creature stood up directly across from him. He said it was taller than he was, even though it stood slumped over. Its arms were long, its hands were nearly at its knees, and it appeared bony. At its feet was a dead carcass, presumably a dog. Oddly, Otis didn't mention hair, he insists it was dark brownish and slick instead of hairy. Maybe it was wet, I can't say, the river is only 50 yards wide, so he must have gotten a pretty good look at it. He felt compelled to walk to our house to warn us not to be outside that night. What he didn't know was that I was really missing a dog, and my uncle had also seen a Bigfoot creature weeks earlier. Until he died in 1987, he never went back, his hunting was limited to sitting under a lone tree within sight of his log shack. It would be another 10 years before Otis got electricity and TV, so I can't believe he could have had any preconceived notions of any creatures. I ran into his son this year and asked him to tell me the story as he knew it. It was exactly the same. I was pretty young. Me and my older sister had gotten into some kind of argument, and in a rage, my dad grabbed me and threw me into my room. Now, it's about 8 p.m., my room is dark, and the lights are out so naturally that I'm scared. But what happened next scared me even more. Instinctively, I try to leave my room. As I open the door, the doorway is blocked. Not by my dad or my sister, but something else. All I can remember is blocking my way by holding its arms outwards. And another four arms stretching up and down diagonally. Think of the shape the red takes on the Union Jack flag, and you've got the right idea. Of course, I slammed the door, dove under my covers, and hid. I never really thought about it after that. Until my sister told me a few years ago that she had seen the exact same thing. Bear in mind that I didn't tell her about my encounter. Then, two years ago, I'm hanging out with my friend Brian and his roommate, John. I'd known John previously, as his family lived across from me in the same flat complex as I grew up in. One night, while smoking a few joints and talking about scary experiences, 
John tells us about something he saw while living in the flats. A tall figure stood in front of his door with six arms. No features, just black. As I was typing this out, my eyes started to well up as I told him that I and my sister had seen the exact same thing. That was the last time I ever spoke about it. For those interested, the flats in question are called St. Teresa's Gardens in Dublin, Ireland. I tried looking up the history of the area but turned up nothing. My dad and brother have lake houses right next to each other in upstate New York on Lake Ontario. They are in a very secluded area on a peninsula. You can only get there by boat or by walking down a mile-long path deep through a forest. One winter morning, we were all getting ready to go out and play after a night of heavy snowfall. My uncle looked out the window toward the path we used to get back and forth from the parking lot to our houses. As he looked out, he saw a pair of the eeriest, strangest looking deer he or I had ever seen. They had all grey fur and long, dark almond-shaped eyes that stared intently, and their antlers were too long, jagged horns protruding straight out of their skull. These deer were like none either of us had seen. My grandmother walked outside to take pictures of them, and after she snapped a few pictures, they seemed to just walk away. The two deer silently strolled into the woods, not making a single sound. They did not even have to hop the slightest bit through the foot of snow on the ground. What makes this even weirder and actually startling has to do with the pictures. After looking back, neither of the deer showed up in any of the pictures taken. The camera was fine, as everything but where the deer were standing was clearly photographed. Even what was behind the deer showed up in the photos. When we walked over to where they had been walking, no more snow had fallen, this was a minute or two after they walked away, no tracks were found. The snow appeared untouched. I know this story isn't exactly scary, but it is intriguing and a strange mystery. A few years later, my cousins and I were walking down the path. We all had a strange feeling I can only describe as dread. It was like the feeling you get when you are sitting outside the principal's office waiting to be called in. We looked over and saw two deer, just like the ones before. The forest floor around the path was covered in leaves and dry brush, but we did not hear them walking around. The two deer were pacing, watching us. At least that's how I felt at the time and still feel to this day. Both of the deer simultaneously turned their heads the second we looked at them. We exchanged excruciating eye contact for around 10 seconds or so. It could have been longer, for all I know. It just felt so odd. Then they proceeded to walk over a hill out of sight. We did not hear them walk away. It's like they float above the ground. This was in the early 2000s, and they have not been seen since. This is still a topic of conversation for our family to this day. Also, there are many other creepier things that I have seen at our lake house. This is just the story I know best because we still talk about it. This happened about a decade ago, when I was a teenager. My family and I moved onto a country property that had a small acreage paddock on the side of the house, bordering on dense bush or forest. No other houses were nearby. Anyway, I would go out at around 9-ish, dark, in the evening to give my horse a last feed, pat and brush, and check that he wasn't cold, etc. He was the first horse I ever had, so I was really fond of hanging out with him. Anyway, for two nights in a row, this owl just suddenly turned up and would be sitting on the clothesline, really close to where I would stand with the horse. It would just stare intensely at me the whole time and not fly off, even though I would be literally within inches of it. Not even the huge sensor spotlight on the driveway nearby would freak it out enough to fly off when it would come on and light up the whole house and paddock periodically, depending on where we moved around in that spot. I thought it was peculiar with the owl, but that was about it until now, in hindsight. Anyway, on the third night, it was there again but did eventually fly off halfway through me feeding the horse. I stood there stroking my horse in the glow of the faint interior garage light for about 10 minutes, just taking in the night, when my mom came out from behind me, where the garage side doorway was, to see how I was doing, etc. As we started talking, her three chow house and my bull terrier ran out into the middle of the paddock for a sniff. As they ran past the first paddock fence, they set off the sensor spotlight. We kept talking for about a minute when my mom was slightly elevated above me and the horse in the garage looked puzzled over the horse towards the back of the paddock, saying, what is that? The paddock, towards the back, became incredibly steep, with our water tank sitting on the high side as it descended down to the other side of the paddock, bush, and road. I must add all my animals, the horse, the dogs, and strangers. If the dogs saw anything suddenly start moving fast out of nowhere, they would definitely chase it and bark at it aggressively. Anyway, I stepped out in front of my horse with my mom and moved towards the fence to see a white figure hunched over beside the water tank as if sussing out the water that had overflowed. At first, from the position it was in, I thought it might be a large kangaroo, Australia, but as me and my mom leaned on the fence to get a closer look with the light shining brightly, 
it suddenly turned its face over its shoulder and looked at us, realizing we were watching it. In that second, we realized it was a human face, but we were both frozen in shock at what it possibly was. Next it suddenly turned around and went from being this maybe hunched over animal to a giant slender figure, taller than the water tank, seventh-ish, shaped like a humanoid or man with a long face, mouth, and eyes, white all over, no hair, and long arms. However, what was really odd was that it was wearing a baggy, huge white t-shirt that hung past its waist. No other clothing. It stared at us for a second, standing straight up, then quickly hunched over low to the ground again and started running down the steep hill across the borderline of the paddock and bush, just like on all fours down the hill except instead of its hands touching the ground, they just went side to side like someone normally running or walking. Even though it was hunched, its back was dead straight at that angle, and its neck and head kept smoothly turning over its shoulder, looking at us as it ran as fast as possible. Even as it disappeared into the bushes, where you couldn't see it, you could still hear it smashing through the bushes. All the while, our dogs didn't bark or acknowledge anything had happened, even though the thing ran right in front of them. Neither did the horse budge to the loud smashing noises of it in the bush. Me and my mom, suffice to say, bolted back into the houses, freaked out at what we had seen. After that, I stopped hanging out at night alone with the horse. The main thing that still gets to me the most about that sighting is the out-of-place t-shirt, how it ran so fast at such an impossible angle against gravity while managing to twist its head at us, and the dogs ignoring it. So my question is, what do you think it might have been, and have you heard or had any similar experiences? I think a dogman was stalking me once a long time ago when I was hunting wild hogs in the swamps of eastern North Carolina. I was about 20 or 21 and loved exploring the swamps where I lived. I got into hunting wild hogs because it was a pretty big adrenaline rush. They are pretty aggressive here. I went into the swamp about 10 miles from my house, where there were trails on dry land through a marshy area, and it was heavily wooded. I heard something close by and stopped to look and listen. I could hear something breathing really deeply and almost growling, then it stopped. This happened a few more times, so I changed direction to try and get behind it and pin it between myself and the water, but it changed direction with me. After about an hour of creeping around, I realized it was between me and the way out of the swamp. At this point, I'm starting to get a little scared because I don't think it's a hog at this point anymore. I made the decision to get baked by wading through the swamp in water up to my chest. I think it tried to follow me but wouldn't go in the water. I eventually made it back to where I could get to my truck. A few days later, I told my buddy's cousin about it and all the bones and weird stuff I saw, and he completely changed when I told him where I was and said to stay away from there. I asked him why, and he wouldn't say any more. Fast forward a few years, and I'm at his house. All of his family was there, and his uncle came and talked to me and said, I heard where you were out in the swamp hunting hogs. You're lucky you made it back. I asked why, and he said, that's where the big dogs live. I asked what he meant, and he wouldn't say it anymore. I hunted a few more years, but not in that same spot, and eventually started working a different job, got into other hobbies, and also started playing in a working band, so I had no time for it. I completely forgot about that day until a few years ago, when I saw a story about Dog Man, and I immediately remembered that day. I've since heard a lot of stories similar to mine and also heard of Dog Man encounters around and down the coast from where I live. I stay out of the swamp now and don't go in any farther than I have to if I have to. So I am from Alexandria, Kentucky, and I saw something last night that I couldn't entirely explain. Last night was midnight madness for our school. It's basically some stupid football event during the summer but everyone goes to see people they haven't seen over the summer. I went with my two friends and one of their girlfriends. We got there around 10.45. Me and my friends were getting pretty bored of the event, and my one friend had just bought dabs. For those who don't know, dabs are like a concentrated form of weed. We got in my buddy's car and were looking for a place to smoke. We were driving around this subdivision that had very thick forests all around it. We settled on this abandoned house and decided to smoke in the woods behind it. My friend was setting up his rig, and we realized we had forgotten the water for the dab rig. A dab rig is basically a bong for dabs, and it needs water or else it will be very harsh to smoke. Well, we had parked a little bit down the street, so no one would be suspicious. Nobody wanted to go back to the car because it was a 5 minute walk back to the car. So I decided to go back for the water. While I was walking back, I heard scratching from behind a nearby house. It kind of freaked me out, but I thought it must have been a dog or an animal. I made it to the car, got the water, and started heading back. As I was walking by the house, I heard the scratching. I began to hear it again, but then I heard what sounded like a footstep kicking up gravel when someone starts trying to run. I turn and see something that has kept me up all night. 
Now keep in mind that I am a 6 foot 2 17 year old guy, so I am bigger than most things. And this thing that I saw had me easily beat in height by 2 to 3 feet. It was slender, but with long, almost stretched out limbs. I couldn't really make out any more details because it was pretty dark. The creature was running from one backyard to another. I never saw its face, only its body. It ran on two feet, but it was faster than any person I have ever seen run. Hell, it was faster than anything I've ever seen run. The creature made it from one backyard to the next, about 50 to 90 feet, in about 3 to 5 seconds. I was standing in the middle of the street, about 30 feet away. I stood there for a second, in complete shock. Then I ran as fast as I could to my friends. I ran through thorns and bushes to make it back to them. I ran and told them what I saw. I'm not too sure if they believed me, but the panic in my voice was enough for them to know I had seen something. We all packed up our rig and went back to the car. I have been up all night trying to find out what I saw. The two closet things I have seen on the internet are something called the Dover Demon and something called the Wood Devil. I never saw its face, so I'm not too sure what it was. If anyone can help me explain what I saw or has had a similar experience, please let me know. My mom's house is in Fry, Georgia. Her backyard is in TN. I was bringing her home from the hospital in 1991. I pulled the car up in the driveway above her house. She has a hill going down to her house. Her garden was off to the side of her house. It was twilight. I pulled the car up, got out, and went to her side to help her out of the car and down to her house. I opened her door and looked down toward the house for a moment, and something caught my eye. I jerked my head back around and spotted a huge figure in the middle of her garden. The garden was in full swing. Everything was filled out and full of vegetables. I say to mom, hey, do you see that? Is there anything in the garden? Mom I think it's a bear. A big bear. She said no way. I said, look. We both looked good. It wasn't a bear, it was too tall and too round, I said. It was frozen. It stayed absolutely still, like we could not see it. I told mom to get back in the car, and I'd go down and get her husband and a gun. She says no. I say if it decides to come on, you can't get away from it fast enough. She says, come on, I'm not sitting here all night. I get beside her, hold her arm, and navigate her down her steep hill and shallow steps. Trying to hurry her and protect her at the same time. The figure still doesn't move. I get her down to her door, let her in, and come back out to see what it was exactly. I saw that it was sitting in the tomatoes, and then I saw something off to the side of the big thing. It was a baby. So it looked to me first of all like a huge sitting bear and cub in my mama's tomatoes. But then it stood up. It was, y'all, I'd say, about 8 feet tall. It grabbed the baby by the hand and looked back at me, looking back at her, and she just calmly walked the baby out of the garden while holding an armful of goodies with the other arm. She looked back at me and just turned her head and went straight back into the woods, which were right there bordering my mom's yard. I ran in and told them that it wasn't a bear, but a Bigfoot. I was excited. They were skeptical and didn't say anything except that it was better for damn sure not to torque their garden up or it'd be a dead sob. She never mentioned whether they were visited again. Mom died a month later. And I drew a picture of mom's garden, Bigfoot. That would be called Copperhill, Tennessee. And I live in Copperhill now, above the Okoe River, and they all come to the river. And some through our yard. I've got, I'd say, 500 pictures. I took real pictures of the woods every time I went out and heard something or saw a flash of something. I snapped away. On Friday night, my so and I started driving interstate to visit our family for a long weekend. We were on the road for two hours on a pretty desolate highway until we reached their house a little past midnight. They live in a housing complex surrounded by woods. The way the complex is set up is that there's sectional buildings, a huge parking lot in the center, and big woods surrounding the suburban area. People were still awake and left their balconies open in different parts of the complex since it was a nice summer night. We got out of our car and started to unload our bags. I have 20-20 peripheral vision, to the point that if there was a tiny bug moving, I'd see it. What I saw in the corner of my eyes while my side was facing the building entrance was a dark figure in front of the brightly lit doorway. I didn't think anything of it for a second and just assumed someone was entering or exiting. Then I thought, how are they being so quiet? We were 40 feet from the door. Double take. I quickly turned to look, and there was no one in the doorway. I reflexed my head back in disbelief to double check. My so looked at me since I looked so confused. What it looked like to me in the flash was a dark figure at least 5 or 6 feet tall from where I was standing, and they had their arms spread out. 
As we were finishing up getting out all our bags, we heard owls hooting and cooing right behind us to the trees that sit by the side of our section of the complex. I've never heard owls there in the three years they've lived there. My husband looked at me and was like, did you hear that? I didn't even respond since I was getting scared. Instead, I urgently said, we need to go right now. I'm not new to aliens, so I know owls symbolize aliens. We rushed inside. Once we got in, we settled in shortly. Our cat, Francis, was greeting us in the doorway, which was normal since he usually senses us coming. After half an hour, Francis was still hanging out near the entrance of the apartment door. He was meowing and looking up at the door. I walked up to him and was baby talking to him, asking him what he's doing there and if he was expecting anyone, and then letting him know, there are no more guests for tonight, sweetie. Come over here. I was confirming that I intended to not be visited by any paranormal things, since paranormal things are not new to me. The odd thing was that he kept going back there through the night. My so and I finally went to bed at around 2 to 3 a.m. We were hanging out in the bedroom, just reading things on our phones and computers. We were talking about the owl we heard outside and how freaky it was. My so was trying to tell me to relax about it, but honestly, I felt this fearful anxiety rush over me. The bedroom was smelly, and he wanted to open the window. But I was too scared and told him not to open any windows, and we'd just have to sleep with the smell. He knew it was because of what we heard outside. At that exact moment, we both heard a knocking sound on the wall facing the exterior of the house. Three knocks, to be exact. I was freaking out but tried to rationalize that someone had access to the wall the sound was coming from, like maybe if there was a balcony there. But I checked later the next day, and there wasn't, it was an exterior wall that faced the woods. To say the least, that's not the end of the night. At 4.30 am, when we had already turned off the lights, we heard a hissing sound coming from outside. I woke my so and told him to listen. He was very alarmed and cautious at that point and wanted to open the blinds. I told him to close our vent, even though the vents don't even make that sound. It sounded like a snake. He checked outside through the little spaces in between the blinds but didn't see anything. The hissing stopped. We both prayed to God and tried to get some rest. Honestly, these were really freaky events that happened in one night. Let me just start by saying I find this story highly dubious, with the exception of the fact that the guy who relayed the story to me, my ex-girlfriend's father, was obviously very serious when telling the story, after much coaxing from her. When he was in his late teens, he was hanging out with his four brothers on the outskirts of Tampa, Florida, near a backwoods road, this must have been sometime in the 70s, maybe very early 80s at the latest. They'd had a bit to drink, which doesn't really help the credibility of the story. But they say they witnessed a winged creature land on the road that they have since referred to as the gargoyle. He described it to me as being bipedal, maybe about four feet tall, with a strong, stocky body, long, thin neck, beak-like face, glowing eyes, and pointed protrusions like ears. The skin was described as leathery, as were the wings. He and his brothers were always out in the woods and swamps, the type of guys that would catch rattlesnakes for cash, to make anti-venom so they weren't frightened by the creature as much as they were curious. After hesitating momentarily to provoke one another, one of the brothers actually attempted to grab the gargoyle, and it flew off. It took a lot of pushing for him to tell us the story. I don't think he was afraid of the creature, but he was just sort of confused and didn't want to be called out on it. I believe that he believes he saw something. I'm just curious if this fits the description of any other reported cryptids, especially in the South Florida region. This happened when I was 17. I'm 32 now. I graduated high school and got my first apartment. Nice town. I lived alone, except for my cat. Snowball. Don't laugh, I named her when I was 8 years old. A few details before we get started. I've never been a fan of cat boxes. The worst part of being a cat owner is shoveling tiny shit with a tiny shovel every day. So I got one of those motion-activated self-scooping deals. I left it on the back patio, ran the cord inside to power it and left the back sliding door open big enough for her to get in and out. 5 to 6 inches. The patio was one of those 8 by 8 cement floored types, surrounded by a 5 foot tall wooden fence. If you looked out from my bedroom door, you'd be facing right at the sliding door with hanging blinds, the living room in between, and the kitchen that was off to the right. So I'm playing some 56k Counter-Strike at the computer in my room with my back facing the door. It's about midnight or 1am I hear Snowball start to make one of those awful cat growling slash rrrrr noises in the back of her throat. I'm pretty locked into the game, so I tell her to knock it off, not looking at her. She keeps doing it. I tell her to shut up. I'm irritated because I'm doing well in the round. She gets loud. This is enough to break me from my gaming zone, and I realize this is not normal. 
I get up from my computer to see her standing in the doorway facing out, her back to me. She is in full Halloween cat mode. Her hair sticks straight out, her back is completely arched, and she looks tensed. I'd never seen her that way. She is still just going crazy. Ruro o u owl. I look out into the living room, where she is facing. Nothing is amiss. There is nothing there. I look down at her to say something to the effect of, what's the matter? She makes this insane sound. Like a combination of a hiss, a growl, or a spit, and she starts to take a few steps backwards. That is when a tiny creature runs out of the ducking kitchen. On two legs, wearing a tattered piece of cloth or a bag, it looked like a little cloak. It's maybe a foot and a half tall. It's a real life ducking jump scare. The cat jumps backwards about three feet in the air, and I jump. I glance down at her as she does this, but quickly look back up. I hear her land with a crash behind me, and I run. I am fixated on the thing. It's moving, but it's like time is slowed down. I am watching these things happen, but everything is so fast. It runs out the back door through the blinds with a crash at speeds that don't even seem natural. The blinds are swinging. My heart is pounding. I stand there dumbfounded. What the hell did I just see? I'm staring at the back patio door and at the swinging blinds. I'm not moving. My eyes start to notice that something is wrong. All the blinds are softly swinging, except the two closest to the opening. I see they're making an inverted V. I look at them and follow them down to the very bottom, and between them I see it. Its head is poking through the blinds, staring at me. It has yellow eyes and a face that I can only describe as bestial. Gray, greenish, or blackish skin. At this point, a singular, loud thought fills my mind. You aren't supposed to see this. And at the conclusion of that thought, every one of the hanging blinds shoots upward and outward. I jump again, and my heart tries to blast out of my chest like I'm ducking Cape Canaveral. Some of them hit the ceiling. A few fall off. It's a loud racket. The rest are swinging all over the place. I look at the place where its face was, and it's gone. I beeline for the kitchen. The refrigerator door is open. I open a drawer and grab the biggest knife I see. I am shaking. Adrenaline like I have never experienced before. I rush to the sliding door and slam it shut. It won't close. I open it a bit and slam it back shut. Still won't close. What the duck? I am completely stupid. The cat box cord. I crouch down, brandishing this knife like a complete idiot, looking out the glass door, waiting for this thing to launch at my face. I'm shaking. I reach across myself with my left hand to the power plug on the wall to the right as I stare out, waiting to stab anything that approaches. I fumble to get it unplugged, my hands won't do anything right. I finally get the cord unplugged, and I open the door real quick to throw the cord outside. I throw it like a spaz, and it hits the wall and the side of the door and falls down. Still inside. Duck. I pick it up and try again, but this time it lands outside. I hear a scratching sound, and my eyes dart up. I see two tiny, awful looking hands holding onto the fence. Clawed, gnarly, humanoid hands. This ducking thing climbed down feet first, hanging from the fence. It would have been slightly comical if it wasn't so ducking terrifying. The hands let go, and I hear it land in the bushes outside the fence, and I hear fast footsteps as it runs off. I slam the door shut and lock it. This is completely true. I've heard it all. It was a raccoon. It was a cat with a mange trapped in a paper bag. It was not either of those things. After the event, I started researching like a madman. The closest thing I found was in a book I found at the library called Fairies, which is like an art book featuring all the different types of Irish folk creatures. I don't live in Ireland. I live in the US on the West Coast. You don't believe this story, and I don't blame you. I want the truth. Was I hallucinating? It's entirely possible I had an extreme and sudden hallucination. It's not unheard of. This event had a huge impact on my life and completely affected the way I view the world the paranormal, and religion. Everything. I'm in college, and me and some other seven people from my school went on a backpacking trip, and we had two experienced leaders. We drove to Zaleski State Forest, which is in the Appalachian region of Ohio. It was early April this year, and it was cold, and everything was still dead from winter. After hiking miles into the forest, we set up camp at the backpacking campsite, and there were a couple other groups of people as well. A few of them were friendly older couples and then two college-aged girls. Everyone was pretty spread out from each other, we set up camp farther away from everyone else. I have always been able to sense the energy of places, and the energy in this area wasn't great, it was almost spooky. Each of us had individual, one-person tents, and we formed a kind of cluster on this site, with my tent being in the back, so no one was behind me. 
Our cluster was also right next to the forest, because this backpacking site was like a big cleared off square in the middle of the trees. Fast forward, I'm dead asleep around 2 AM, and I wake up to leaves crunching right behind my tent. I hear footsteps walking in circles around my tent, they had a sort of heaviness to them that couldn't be a deer or a dog, and it also sounded like just two legs. I cannot make this up, this creature was circling my tent for long periods of time, slowly creeping up to the sides of my tent and then just stopping for periods of time, and then would move on to waking around the rest of our tent cluster. I could hear a human breathing from the mouth when it was close to my tent, like a light sort of heaving. I was shaking, too scared to unzip my tent and investigate. I kid you not, this occurred for hours, and it seemed I was the only one awake. Out of nowhere, I see an illuminated light shape from my tent, although I couldn't tell what it was from inside my tent because it was all zipped up. It was like a warm glow. I might have assumed it was someone's flashlight, except no one was moving. I was paralyzed in fear, I simply couldn't believe it was an animal. At some point, I fell asleep due to sheer exhaustion, but I could hear the heavy footsteps circling until I did. In the morning, I questioned my fellow campers about it, and my leader admitted she heard the footsteps and noises as well, admitting it was bizarre and she would have investigated had she not been so groggy. One of the boys in the group said he also noticed the light that came on but thought it was someone else. Not a single person in this group went up to go to the bathroom or turned on a light that night. I've heard things about the Appalachian regions being creepy and bizarre, and now I believe it. Has anyone had a similar experience? I come from a family of hunters. It was not uncommon for my mom and stepdad to go out early in the morning and not come home until well into the night on occasion. In rural Georgia, it is fairly common for landowners to lease out their acres for hunting to different folks depending on the seasonality and the type of hunting they are doing, and deer season for archers begins at the end of the summer. My mother has this story that I love to hear as a child that, as an adult, had a horrifying twist. One afternoon, my parents struck out to hunt for the day. The land they leased that particular year ran alongside a power line route. These routes are clear cut through the woods and create a man-made field. A hunter can set their tree stands up in the thickets surrounding these fields and wait for grazing animals to come by. Around dusk, my mom started to look out for my stepdad to come and pick her up. He would usually help her get situated in her stand, then go and find his setup further down the trail. As the sun began to sink, she saw him walking down through the power line clearing. My stepdad is a brolic type man who has a wide gait in his walk. He swings his arms a bit as he walks, I mean, it's kind of similar to a caveman to me. Even in the low sinking light, she could make out his silhouette and see that he was zigzagging from side to side of the clear-cut field. He'd obviously forgotten where they had set her up and was trying to find her, so she stood up and waved her hands to get his attention. At that moment, the creature she thought was my stepdad noticed her. It dropped down to all fours and darted into the woods, making a strange low growl as it did. She waited for what seemed like an eternity for my stepdad to come and get her. She was terrified and in tears. This was a story shared many times in my childhood when I asked for a scary hunting story, they have plenty of them. It's not that I didn't believe my mom, but we all know that the night can play tricks on us and heighten our imagination, so when I asked for this story in my teenage years, imagine my surprise when my stepdad spoke up. A man of few words and a lack of imagination, he raised his head at the dinner table. I've never told either of you this, but I think I probably should. That night, the creature wasn't running away from your mother. I was walking along the line of the woods towards her tree stand when I noticed it. I smelled it before I actually saw the thing. It had a pungent odor, almost skunk-like, and it seemed to be a little over six foot tall, covered in thick, coarse hair. It saw me about the same time as I was drawing back an arrow to take aim. At first, it growled, then dropped to all fours and sprinted towards me as I released the arrow, knocking it in the arm. I was shaking and just missed the intended hit. The animal veered to the side and kept running. To this day, I wonder what that creature was. These are my encounters with the creatures known as dogmen while living in Kentucky, they still haunt me to this day, and I thought I would share them with you all. Story 1. I was 8 years old and living in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. It was the summer of 2012, and it was a hot one. One summer night, I woke at 11.30 to 12 o'clock, and I was sweating like hell, so I walked over to the window to crack it. That's when I saw something in the tree line by our stock pond, we own no animals other than a small terrier, but the previous owners were commercial farmers. I watched for about five minutes before it emerged, and when it did, I was horrified. It was a wolf-like creature, about six to seven feet tall and partially covered in dark gray hair that shone in the light of the full moon. It walked out on two legs, then very quickly dropped on all fours and ran the hundred or so yards to the stock pond in mere seconds. It drank for a while, 
then stood up on two legs again, and I got a really good look at it. The thing was horrible looking. The fur was all patchy and very skinny, and it looked like it was covered in some kind of injury. Years later, when I saw the third Harry Potter movie for the first time, I saw the werewolf, and that's almost exactly what it looked like. It then took off across the old corn field and into the woods on the other side. I had heard stories of the creature but never really believed them until that night. I heard a week later while out around town with my folks that there had been an attack at a nearby farm, and three hogs and one horse had been eaten or ripped to shreds. That was my first, but not last, encounter with a dogman. Story 2. I caught glimpses of the things consistently ever since that first sighting, but never got another good look at one of them until the fall of 2015, a month before we moved to Maine. It was dusk, and I was outside with some of my friends playing with our Nerf guns as young boys do. Those were the good days. Anyway, after a while, we got bored and started a fire. We told dirty jokes and laughed for a while, but then we started hearing noises in the woods, and the laughter died down. We all retreated to the woodshed and armed ourselves with axes, pitchforks, and the like before returning to the fire. About 10 minutes later, something rustled in the woods about 20 yards behind us, but no one dared to look and see what the hell it was. Finally, my friend Jeremy turned around to look, and the scream he let out could have brought down the barn roof. That's when we all turned around and saw one of them. Except this one was much taller, I'd say eight and a half to nine feet, and it was pure muscle and gray hair. It was on all fours sniffing around the barn, but when Jeremy screamed, the thing looked at us, stood up on two legs, and snarled. That's when my dad came out of the house with his shotgun and screamed, what in God's name is going on? We all just pointed and screamed, then he looked at it, yelled go on git, and shot at it twice. It ran into the woods yelping, as I think it had been hit, and we all went inside and locked the doors. My dad sat in his chair with a shotgun the whole night, and I swore I could hear scratching along the side of the house until daylight. It turns out that when we went outside the next morning, there were claw marks all over the side of the house. After that, everything was quiet until we moved, and I've never seen anything like that since. I come from a very small town in eastern Connecticut, USA. It was 3 p.m., and I had set off for hairdressing school alone one day, and all seemed completely normal, the traffic, the weather, people, etc. The day went as planned. We were stuck in a theory class drooling with boredom, then 10 p.m. hit, and we were dismissed to go back home. Now my drive is about a 45-minute drive home. It wasn't much of a bother, considering I had been doing it for over a year at that point. I get about three quarters the way home, then on the road was a brigade of police, firemen, and ambulances, apparently, a house burned down and the family did not make it out in time. According to the police, they were in their mid-80s 90s, and there was going to be no traffic traveling through the main route until it was cleared by the state. Okay. I asked the kind officer if he knew the best way to go around because, as far as I knew, that was the only road leading to my faraway town. He gave me vague directions, but I couldn't be mad, I couldn't imagine what he just had to see at that house. So I throw in a GPS and manually make a route to go back home. After about 20 minutes of driving through some back roads, I turn onto a very hauntingly scary dirt road with pillars of dead, decaying trees. I'm driving along, and it is horribly bumpy, so the fastest I could go without ripping my cars apart was like 20 to 25 miles per hour. After a few minutes and a few really sharp turns, I come up to an extraordinarily small bridge. It was so small that even my 17 Chevy Cruze soccer mom car could barely squeeze through. I had to fold my mirrors in so I did not lose them on this tiny bridgeway. It was maybe a 10 long bridge at max. As soon as all four of my tires were on the bridge, everything shut down. Mid-drive. Like 10 miles per hour to zero in an instant. My car is keyless, so as long as the key is in the car, it will always turn on electronically. Yet my car died and would not turn back on. If it doesn't have a battery, the dash still comes on, saying it has too little power to come on, but nothing happens. The power steering locked, and everything went black. I was locked in my car in the middle of an absolutely nowhere Rhode Island. Then, shortly after the car went black, my phone instantly died, from 93% to 0% in an instant. At this point, panic sets in. It's dead silent, and I'm completely alone, with not a house within like 2 miles. My biggest fear was becoming reality. I start seeing and hearing something moving around the trees surrounding me. Then it stops, and foolishly, I look with my side mirrors while trying to turn on my car frantically and see nothing. Then I look out the rear view mirror, and what I see churns my stomach and twists it into knots. I saw a figure in the dark of the night standing behind my car. Out the back window, it was small, and then it got closer and closer until it was right up to my trunk. Tap, tap, tap on my trunk. 
This tall, gangly man, whatever it was, was tapping on my trunk like he was thinking. Like any white person in a horror movie, I turned to look at it. All I can see in the rear window is a dark, gaunt, amorphous figure's chest towering well above my view, careful not to show its face. Another noise comes from the woods, and then it slams its freakishly long fingers and hands down on my trunk, then runs off into the woods. A few seconds after it was out of sight, my car turned back on, and my phone came back to life. What felt like hours and hours of horror and reality lasted only a handful of minutes. At this point, I threw it into the car, saying screw my car, and driving on this road going well near 50 miles per hour to haul out of there. I have no clue what this creature was. I had nightmares for weeks about that very night. I have no clue what it was, but I am just glad to make it home safely to my family, and I have absolutely no temptation to ever go back there again, even during the day. That was probably one of the worst paranormal cases I have personally been involved in. If you might have any clue what you think it might be, let me know. I've always been skeptical of evidence of apparitions, and more specifically, poltergeists. I wanted solid visual evidence with my own two eyes. I met an incredible person in an old town, and we have a mutual drawing towards the unknown. One dark, cool night, we decided to go for a walk at night, and on a whim, we entered the town cemetery as we came across it. We were apprehensive about entering and were spooked, thinking we'd see dark shapes behind headstones. They like being light tricks. As we approached the center of the cemetery, my nerves calmed, and I said to myself, I can relax, nothing is going to happen. Boy, was I wrong? I noticed something dark moving roughly 50 yards ahead of us, near broken, tall headstones. This shadow quickly grew in size, as if something huge were standing up from being on all fours. Then something astounding happened. All at once, my partner and I look up together and witness this figure glowing a very bright gray. It stood very tall at an easy 9 feet or more. It appeared to have two long legs, long arms, and a head that was slouched on its shoulders. As suddenly as it began to glow, it gracefully walked across one quarter of the width of the graveyard in three to four strides, glowing the whole time. Right into the path that we were heading towards. If we had not stopped, we would have been face to face with this thing. It was full of detail but very fleeting. I got what I asked for and far more. This is a terrifying account of something I have yet to correlate with any other sort of account. This was all too real, and we both carry the memory forever. For a while, we wondered if we were being followed home and were aware of seeing this in the home. We were terrified, but in our experience, we grew a much tighter bond. Three years later, we still don't know what we saw for sure. But we have also seen other dark shadows at the same cemetery and even captured a humanoid shadow in full spectrum standing beside me. Since then, the whole area has been regarded by Native Americans as sacred hunting grounds, and we have found evidence of cannibalistic natives right in the area. Near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Western Pennsylvania is in a rural county about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. Myself and many others in my town had seen what the locals referred to as a bear cougar. This was a four-legged cat-like animal whose body was built like a bear, with only a slighter frame. Fur was a deep brown, and the creature had a long bushy tail, almost like a fox tail, but more expressive and prehensile, like a big cat. The creature's head and ears were cat-like, but its muzzle was elongated like a bear or dog. I saw this creature run across the road one morning on my way to work. Lots of locals had seen this creature over the course of about 8 to 10 months. Most notably, the creature had been seen by a local man who was a retired veterinarian and wildlife warden. He has seen bears and mountain lions, even though the game commission avows that they aren't in Pennsylvania, and he was adamant that this creature was neither of the two but claimed that it looked like a hybrid of the two animals. He went so far as to offer a bounty to any hunter who could capture or kill the creature. A few months after that, state police and the game commission were seen in much higher concentrations around the area. This is a very rural community, and the only time we see police is when they are called, so it was strange to see them patrolling the area. Shortly after that, no more sightings of the creature were reported. I'm about 23 now and this happened to me back in high school or at the beginning of college. My best friend from my hometown seems to be a magnet for the paranormal. Her and I have both had our fair share of creepy stuff happen to us, but this experience is the one story I don't mind telling people because it's very tangible and real since it happened to the both of us, and I feel a little less crazy talking about it knowing other people experienced it too. So my good friend, let's call her Ginny, has always been sensitive to the paranormal. Ginny's best friend, let's call her Liz, is somewhat the opposite. She doesn't preoccupy herself with these kinds of things and doesn't like to talk about the paranormal. Ginny and I were neighbors, while Liz lived 20 or so minutes away in a different town, so most nights we would hang out at my house or Ginny's, 
and Liz would sleep over at Ginny's while I just went home, I'm a guy. Liz's hometown is an old farming community halfway to Philadelphia from the metropolitan area Ginny and I are from. It's an old town along a river with old houses and a few residents. Normally we didn't spend much time at Liz's house, and Ginny rarely slept over, I have since realized there was a reason Ginny didn't like staying there. Anyways, one day during winter break, we decided we wanted to make a day trip to New York, and since Liz's dad works close to the city, we had planned on riding with him and taking a train in. So naturally, we decided to sleep over Liz's house that night because we had to get up early to ride into the city. That night, Liz and Ginny slept upstairs in Liz's room, while I slept on the couch downstairs in the living room. Liz's house was old, creaky, and had lots of history, and I couldn't help but feel a little uneasy as everyone was settling into bed and I was alone in the living room. Their Christmas tree was up and had dim lights, so I kept it on as a night light, but the surrounding house was still very dark. Sometime around 3 a.m., I woke up uneasily and just felt like something was wrong. It was a hard feeling to explain, but the closest I can think of is dreadful fear without a sense of danger. I was like a child looking at a scary Halloween mask. I somehow knew I wasn't in danger, but I was still frozen with fear. That's when I hear the stairs creaking slowly as something is walking down the stairs from behind the couch I'm on. My back is turned to the stairs as I lay on the couch. I throw the blanket over my feet, pull it up over my head, and close my eyes like a child. I just somehow knew it was not my friends or their parents. It walked slowly and with a constant cadence. I could tell from how the stairs were creaking that it wasn't very heavy. I hear it reach the bottom of the stairs and start to hear its footsteps turn into clacking as it walks on the tile floor hallway leading from the stairs to the kitchen. It sounded a lot like a dog with long nails walking on a hardwood floor. I hear it reaching the end of the hallway, about to enter the kitchen, where it will be out of my sight, so I decide to pop my head up from under the blanket and over the couch rim. I see it for a second before it walks behind the kitchen wall, out of my view. It probably sounds a little comical and cartoonish as I write it out, but let me assure you, this thing was terrifying to encounter in a dark house in the dead of night. It was at least 7 feet tall, with incredibly bone-thin legs and knobby knees. Its feet reminded me of a bald eagle's claw. It had humanoid arms, but instead of hands, they tapered to feathers. Its whole upper body had a scarce amount of feathers on it, while its skin looked like an overcooked chicken. Its head was like a newly hatched bird head, except for its beak, which was at least three head lengths long, thin, and drooped down in a curve. It stood and walked slowly and elegantly in a strong upright posture with broad shoulders, head directly forward. Its eyes were large triangle shapes, somewhat resembling the Pokemon Zapdos. I immediately pulled the blanket over my head again and closed my eyes. I don't know how long I sat frozen there, but after a while, I heard it walk through the dining room into the living room where I was and stand directly in front of the couch, looking over me. I kept my eyes closed under the blanket for what seemed to be a few minutes. I finally opened them after a while to see their shadow in front of the Christmas tree lights through the blue haze of the fuzzy blanket over my head. As soon as I saw it, it turned to the right and walked back up the stairs. Needless to say, I was terrified and couldn't sleep the rest of the night. But somehow I remember waking up and it being dawn. I wrote it off as a night terror. I have a history of bad night terrors that normally mess with my head the rest of the day, but this was different. Once the sun was up and my friends were up, all was well, and I forgot about it. Although Ginny suspiciously asked me how I slept in the absence of Liz later that day, I said fine, thinking it was just a nightmare. A few weeks later, Ginny casually mentions to me that she doesn't like sleeping at Liz's because it's haunted. Suddenly remembering my experience, I ask her to elaborate, and she tells me she always feels weird in Liz's room, and they saw something in a picture they took once. Naturally, I make her show me. Someone had taken a picture of Liz and Ginny kneeling on Liz's bed, arms interlocked, flashing peace signs as teenage girls did in the 2010s. They sent it to someone over Snapchat, and like something out of an urban legend horror movie, the recipient took a screenshot and responded, what's that behind you? In the daylight between their arms, there was a bird-shaped face with angry-looking triangular eyes. It wasn't ghostly or anything. It was clear as day, but it was only a portion of the face, with it blurring around the edges into the normal picture background. Ginny and the picture taker were clearly freaked out, while Liz was just a little unsettled and told Ginny to delete the picture and not talk about it. Ginny kept the picture and showed it to me. She even mentioned she knew why it was a bird of all things, but I don't think I ever got an explanation. I never told the girls about my experience. I had a copy of the photo, but that was a few weeks ago, and I don't want to ask Ginny to send it to me again. After a few more recent paranormal happenings, she doesn't like talking about this kind of stuff anymore either. I saw an earless, skeletal, deer-like creature in the Cougar Gulch area of northern Idaho. 
It was the color and general shape of a white-tailed deer, but much, much taller and thinner, almost all skin and bones, and about the height of a horse. It had no tail, and it had no ears. Its head was long and thin and nearly featureless except for two big, goat-like, yellow and black eyes. It walked out of the tree line into the dirt road on long, spindly legs and stopped dead in the middle as I was driving up the road to a friend's house. It turned its head, and we met eye to eye for a long, bizarre second. I felt a chill through my body. There was no doubt it was looking right into my eyes. I've seen a lot of deer. Idaho deer hunter, they generally seem pretty dumb. This thing had intelligence. It turned away from me as if it were done with me and walked almost regularly off the road and down the steep embankment. It reminded me of those weird, earless goats, but stretched out, ungodly thin, and much larger. Kinda creepy. When I was about 8 or 9 years old, I was hanging out with my younger brother, 5 or 6 years old at the time, and a friend who was my age. It was an overcast day, and the clouds were so dense that the sky appeared entirely grey and without definition. Additionally, there was a very dense layer of fog, lying almost low enough to obscure the grass. We thought it would be fun to walk across the street into my neighbor's yard, as it is uphill and might provide an interesting vantage point for the fog. Twilight was setting in, so we dashed up the hill and partially into their backyard, the house was slightly angled in relation to the road. This was 1995, and in the suburb I grew up in, kids traipsing through random yards was normal. We ascended the hill and were met with what I have to think was another time. Certainly another place. The normally open grassy backyard was oddly clear of fog once we approached it, and within was something out of the Garden of Eden, which was my odd childhood interpretation of what, as an adult, I describe as a Roman-esque style walking garden. There were exotic plants in large stone or ceramic vases, several rows of hedges and large stone walkways throughout the small garden, and a large stone fountain. None of the three of us described experiencing any specific feelings other than shock or surprise at a sight we knew was not there yesterday and a deep, unshakable, and hard to describe thought, that this was not our world. We turned tail, running back down the hill after only perhaps three to five seconds of observation, which unfortunately leaves me with very little description of the area. The next day, the fog cleared, and just to be certain, we approached the hill with trepidation, needing to confirm what exactly was in their yard. The backyard appeared as it had always appeared prior to the foggy day. A grill was set up along the backside of the house, a small swing set was set against the edge of the property, and nothing else. No stone walking paths, no fountain, etc. My brother confirms remembering this event, and unfortunately, my other companion has since passed. As a pretty hard-nosed skeptic, my best explanation that doesn't involve time displacement, multiple dimensions, or whatever other explanations I have heard after telling the tale is that I must have had a very elaborate, very vivid dream. As for my brother's recollection, it is not out of the realm of reason that I explained the dream in explicit detail to my younger brother upon awaking, and at his young age, he came to incorporate my retelling as his own memory. Frankly, I have no idea what the truth of the situation is, but it's the closest thing to a genuine unknown encounter, other than the shadow people that show up in night terrors. Duck those guys, they are just in our heads. Back in the early 1990s, I was a kid, around 13 at the time of this incident, and I used to stay at my grandparents' house a lot out in a very rural area in southeast Arkansas. When I say very rural, I mean it was a series of networked dirt roads to get out to their house. The closest neighbors besides my aunt and uncle, who lived about a quarter of a mile up the road, were over a mile and a half away. This was very backwoods and isolated from most civilizations. The closest town was a 10-mile trip. It's in the middle of farmland and mostly woods. They had lived in this house since my mother was a child. And they had both grown up just a few miles down the road. Anyway, there was a general store roughly 3 to 4 miles down the network of dirt roads. This was your typical country general store run by an old lady and her husband, and its only customers really consisted of the people who lived out there in BFE. One day my grandmother asked me if I wanted to walk to the general store and get her some milk, eggs, and a few other miscellaneous items, and I told her I would. She gave me some money, and I headed on my way. It's fairly early in the day, and I had plenty of time to get back before dark, which I always made sure to do when I was out roaming about. Things can get mighty creepy out in the backwoods of Arkansas after nightfall. It's a darkness unlike most people who have lived primarily in cities or towns have ever experienced. I, being a 13-year-old, had poor time management skills. I stopped at the bottom of a hill next to this small wooden bridge you have to cross and messed around at the creek, catching crawdads and such, and I kind of just messed around the whole way to the store. By the time I left the store, I realized it was quickly approaching dark. This was fall, 
and darkness set upon the land pretty early in the day. I didn't want to be walking those lonely, secluded roads through the woods alone in the dark, so I hurried as fast as I could. Running and sprinting as much as possible. But it wasn't enough. By the time I had made it back to the bottom of the hill near the bridge, it was almost completely dark, and there was an eerie sort of glow brought about by a very bright, nearly full moon that was rising. At the top of the hill, the road was perfectly straight and flat, with woods on the left side and a large field on the right. About a half mile up from the top of the hill is my grandparents' house, and you can see it from there. As I top the hill, I can see the faint glow of the lights at their house, and I feel a sense of relief because I was kind of freaking out a little bit, but knowing I was so close and could see the house offered a little bit of comfort. The field on the right was somewhat illuminated by the glow of the moon, and my eyes had adjusted to the darkness rather well at this point. As I walked up the road, I heard something from the left, behind me on the wooded side of the road. It sounded like leaves being rustled. I turned to look and saw nothing at first, but then, as my eyes began to focus, I saw something in the ditch, a black, shadowy shape slowly moving towards me. At first I thought it was a dog, but then I realized it was much too large to be a dog, and then I realized it wasn't actually walking on four legs, it was crawling, like a person would. I stared for a moment, out of sheer confusion, trying to figure out what I was seeing, and then a jolt of fear shot through me as it dawned on me that whatever this thing was, it had been trying to sneak up on me. At that exact moment, this thing stood upright out of the ditch on two legs, like a person. It had the shape of a human, long arms and legs, and was proportioned as such. It stood roughly 7 to 8 feet in height and was completely covered in black or maybe dark brown hair. Its face was dark in color, and I can't recall seeing much in the way of features due to it being night. It was no bear, for certain, or any other kind of animal I have ever seen, for that matter. I immediately dropped the bag of stuff I had been carrying and bolted as fast as my legs could take me towards my grandparents' house. I heard a heavy breathing slash guttural growling kind of sound behind me and heard this thing's footsteps running behind me on the gravel as it gave chase. I did not turn around, and I was certain that it would grab me at any moment. I then heard it crash off into the woods and let out an earth-shattering and ungodly scream unlike anything I had ever heard before or since. I'm positive this thing could have easily caught me if it wanted to, but for some reason it let me go. By the time I reached my grandparents, my heart felt as if it would explode from the combination of the adrenaline rush I had from being scared beyond any type of fear I had ever felt before or since and full-on sprinting as hard and fast as possible for about a half straight mile. I flew into the house and, in an incoherent mess of hyperactive gibberish, tried to explain to my grandparents what had just happened. My grandmother didn't really seem to believe me, but she did believe something had scared me and acted rather weird about the whole thing. She tried to convince me it was just a dog or some other animal. The next morning I woke up and found my grandpa sitting outside whittling wood underneath the shade tree in the front yard, as he often liked to do. I went and sat down beside him on one of the old metal lawn chairs. He was a very rational man, down to earth, and had grown up in and hunted that area his entire life. He knew every square inch of it, mapped into his mind. He knew every type of critter and creature that lived in those woods, what noise they made, where to find them, how to catch them, etc. I had only been hunting with him for a couple of years, but I had been going out into those woods with him since a pretty young age on walks and such. He had passed a lot of his knowledge down to me during those adventures. I spoke to him about what had happened to me the night before and told him that I knew what I saw. It wasn't my overactive imagination, I wasn't making it up, and it definitely wasn't a dog. He knew that I wasn't just some dumb 13-year-old kid, and he knew that I knew the things he'd taught me. He stopped whittling, looked me right in the eyes, and said, I know what you saw. I've seen it before, too. There's things out in the woods that people don't understand and that a person ought not go fooling with. I remember those words clearly to this day because they gave me affirmation, but at the same time, they made me realize that whatever I'd seen was very real in existence and beyond my understanding. My grandpa then went on to tell me that far back in the woods, there are some cliffs, and at the bottom of those cliffs is a cave. He told me that the cave was where the creature lived. He had once stumbled upon it a long time ago when he was hunting. He said he was standing on the top of the cliff, looking at it, when a creature fitting the same description emerged and began screaming wildly at him and throwing rocks. He said he took a shot at it, missed it, and then this thing gave chase to him. But my grandpa was on top of the cliff, so in order to get to him, this thing had to go around a pretty good distance and then up, which he said it quickly began to do, so he hightailed it out of there in a hurry. He said that the whole way back home, he felt as if he were being watched and kept hearing twigs snap behind him, and he was certain that it was following him. Stalking him. He made it home, and as he reached his front porch, he turned and looked back at the woods from where he'd come and saw them peeking out at him from behind a tree. Later that night, 
he said that he and my grandmother awoke in the early morning hours to large rocks being thrown at the house, ungodly howling noises from outside, and this thing trying to get into the house. He said he could hear it walking around on the front porch, rattling the doorknobs, banging on windows, and it sounded like it was muttering to itself in a deep, garbled voice, but it didn't sound like a language, just a bunch of gibberish. After a while, the thing went back to throwing some more rocks and howling, so my grandpa grabbed his shotgun and fired it out the front door a few times into the darkness and the direction of the howling, and he said he heard it run back into the woods. He didn't know if he'd hit it or not. He said that was the last he'd ever seen or heard from it, but over the years, an occasional farmer's cow would be mutilated, someone's hunting dog would go unexplainably missing, or someone would have a story about some strange creature they'd seen. He also said it scared my grandmother beyond words, and she has absolutely refused to ever talk about it or even acknowledge that it happened. Which explains her acting weird about it when I told her what happened to me. I know it's a pretty far-fetched story, and you can believe it or not. It makes no difference to me. I know what I saw, and my grandpa knew what he saw, and neither of us had ever felt the need to convince anyone else of it. In fact, until today, I have never actually spoken of it to anyone other than my grandpa, and he passed away roughly 10 years ago. Honestly, it gives me chills, and I fully believe it to be real. I've been doing research for hours and can't find any more information. Any would help.